the moments of reveal are each so beautiful. Each moment of affection be like so rare. And so like whenever he just looks at her, every single moment feels so special. I feel like none of our other recommendations are going to be this intense <laughs> and this long. <laughs> just finished binging not just watching binging <laughs> crash landing on you i don't think there are any oh asian yeah that's a korean drama mm, mm-hmm. i don't are there any asian americans who worked on it or no i don't okay. think so but still important that's yeah. why it's called heritage month so <laughs> so it was a very fun drama it was like a very woozy and dizzying week this past week because i just <laughs> binged it every single day after work just to give folks a background there's a very talented CEO of a fashion company, and uh, she inherited her father is like really big conglomerate. And then she goes paragliding, and mm-hmm. there's a really big storm, and she accidentally ends up in North Korea. Uh, so as many of you probably know, South Korea and North Korea yeah. don't have the best relationship. So this is like a very precarious situation. Uh, and so a North Korean soldier finds her, um, feels bad for her, and decides to hide her and try to send her back to South Korea quietly and safely. It's a wild, beautiful, funny story. Um, so Sonia Jin, she's uh, the main woman in the show. Um, at first, I thought she was really bratty and chatty and kind of annoying and selfish. <laughs> But I actually grew to love her because she was really clever and she was very upfront about her feelings for him, which was really refreshing to watch, right? She was a strong woman. Yeah, she wasn't coy like, oh, save me, blah, blah, blah. She was like, I really like you. Hey, yeah. love you. But love also you, right? she sometimes uh, she sometimes would play that coy card, definitely. Yes, she would. When <laughs> she played that card to save her life a couple times. Um, mm-hmm. And Hyomin, he uh, plays the North Korean soldier. At first I was a little bit bothered by his kind of stereotypical, silent, mysterious, strong type, right? You know, we talked to Kevin recently about Asian masculinity, and we talked about how like this stereotype of not expressing emotions is actually a stereotype mm-hmm. that harms a lot of men. Um, mm-hmm. So I was a little bit bothered by that, um, but you later learn why he is so stoic and it makes a lot of sense. And it also gave him a chance to really showcase his very expressive eyes. Like he will just be looking very <laughs> stoic, but then he'll, his eyes will like, like I smile a little bit. And then there, there's one point where she, uh, the protagonist, the female protagonist, she said, you're giving me those I love you and I'm worried eyes. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> swoon. There's also ducklings, which are the uh, other North Korean uh, soldiers who kind of accompany her and help her get back to South Korea. She, they're so funny, so adorable. Each have oh an amazing gosh. personality. Um, also, the wiretapper, I thought his story and character progression was incredible. So complex. Like, he oh. was, his story was one of the most painful, for sure. So, yeah. So he was asked to spy on um, his neighbors and report back to someone who really wanted to hurt the protagonist. So it was heartbreaking for him to... This is kind of like ethical sellout, actually. It reminds me of that episode because mm, he... No, it totally is, yeah. He had to... This was his job. The government assigned him this really difficult job. If he didn't do it, his family would be hurt, right? So mm-hmm. what does he prioritize? His family or his neighbors who... And his neighbors are really good to him. Uh, so, yeah, and <sighs> just to clarify, it wasn't like his family was going to suffer just from financial issues. It was they were going to target and hurt, this actually go actively hurt his family, right. which was... And even so if they were to hurt his family, he would never be able to find justice because the person hurting his family is just so corrupt and has just so much power and connections everywhere. K-dramas are often perceived as like really cheesy and sometimes like ah too predictable. But honestly, the execution is amazing, so it's worth it. Um, I especially love how they did their reveals about um, their so just a little bit of context. So before the characters had met in North Korea, they actually each had spent time in Switzerland. Um, and they didn't know that the other person was in Switzerland, but they just happened to um, bump into each other a couple times. And the audience, the viewer knows this from the very beginning of the drama, but they don't know this. And the moments of reveal are each so beautiful. That was really fun. I also love this one storytelling technique. Tan, I don't know if this is common to all Korean dramas or just this one, but at the end of the episode, they'll do a flashback of something that happened in that episode or in their past life and give you a little bit more detail uh, that they didn't show previously. Is that like a typical Korean drama? No, this is the only drama I've seen that happen. Okay. Yes, I really love that. Because for Um, me, usually I don't like staying for that whole montage, like ending montage, mm -hmm. where they just show snapshots of the episode. Mm -hmm. So usually I would just go ahead and just hit, hit, go to the next episode. But then I realized, like near the end uh, of me watching this, that 
they've been doing this the entire time. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Now I have to go back and watch this entire thing oh, over again. <laughs> yeah. I mm-hmm. loved that because, um, yeah, it just it literally hooks you till the very end. You see them mm-hmm. doing like the, the cheesy, cute snapshots. You're like, oh, I'm done. But then you're like, wait, they're actually showing me something else. Um, yeah. Something else I really like about Korean, this drama, I actually haven't seen any other Korean dramas, um, is it's like very minimal physical affection. Like they're in love for like, most of this drama and they like barely kiss and like barely hug whereas i feel like in a lot of american movies and tv shows it's just like a lot more sexually explicit which is not a bad thing but i think it's fun to like have each moment of affection be like so rare and so like whenever he just looks at her or whenever he like leans in for a kiss like every single moment feels so special yeah i think that's pretty common in a lot of korean dramas um you never you never see anything more than just like a long kiss that is unnaturally old for two minutes long and the camera's panning all around <laughs> yeah. from here from here <laughs> yep yeah mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. actually and the small would... things of like the hands like on the back and like it like caressing them yeah or they do the replays of it. them like leaning in again leaning in again leaning in again <laughs> it's very it's very cute um mm-hmm. so post-drama withdrawals uh so actually both during and so during the drama when i was watching it I wanted to know what was going to happen next in the story, but I also didn't want the story to end. So I actually took a break and just binged every single interview that had English subs of the (laughs) main characters. And yeah, that was very fun. Also, Korean game shows are so cute. I Um, love Korean game shows. Yeah, my favorite uh, game show that they they were in, Hyunbin and Son Yejing, they were uh, reading compliments to each other and there was like a secret compliment that they had written and all the other compliments were written by fans so mm-hmm. they had to each guess what the other person's compliment for them was it was so <laughs> cute um also like the editing of these game shows is amazing they have like the boing boing like little sound effects or little stickers that pop up ah uh, just amazing a lot of the interviews ask the same questions but i still watch the interviews again and again because their off-screen chemistry is so good so good the main characters are like good people in real life too is my impression like they're really thoughtful in their interviews um they're really interested in what the other person is saying um when hyungbin was discharged from military service he had just like a really moving speech about you know what it was like serving oh my god the you watched so much <laughs> yeah i also read a really when did you start this drama last week <laughs> yeah not even not even a week ago and i've, I've literally binged every single youtube video that has english subs of them. that's insane because the episodes too are really long they're like an hour and a half and then the finale was two hours you watch all of that wow no wonder she wasn't responding to me just yes. kidding <laughs> um, i was looking through their social media presence as well i know i just really did my research here um he he doesn't have any social media and her social media on instagram seems very like casual and low-key it, it's not like glamour shots everywhere right mm-hmm. and i was wondering for you like for other dramas that you've watched um, do the actors and actresses have very like fancy social media or is it as low-key as theirs So is? I feel like social media is kind of recent because the culture in Korea is that people don't really... Sh- like, for example, K-pop trainees, they're not allowed to have their phones, so they don't even have Instagrams. They don't have any social media accounts. And, this, and oh. if there are Instagram accounts, it's usually managed by the management, so not even the personality themselves. Oh. So... It's interesting because I've seen a. I don't actually follow any K-pop stars on or Korean stars on social media because mm-hmm. it's not usually the place you would find them on, mm-hmm. and so or find like their authentic self. I guess it's really very different from America, but the ones I have seen, they all seem pretty low key. Like they mm-hmm. usually just post like a selfie of themselves, and I think that just speaks to the culture in Korea. Like they like to. St- they like doing like the filtered selfies. They mm-hmm. like writing about like really mundane things, which yeah. is really nice. Versus, like. America has this whole Instagram culture of like needing everything to be curated and having the perfect professional photo on your feed in the first place. Oh. So it's very, it's interesting that you are kind of discovering this, mm-hmm. especially because you're really interested in social media. Mm-hmm. And it would be cool to maybe see if you end up looking more into other celebrities from Korea and seeing like their social media presence. Mm-hmm. And maybe if you can make like a compare and contrast analysis mm. of, of it at some point. So so are they... So you said it's mostly the talent agency who manages the social media. Are people mm-hmm. not allowed to have their own social media? Or like, how does that work? It's, it's pretty strict, I would say. Oh, I okay. think... 
like you mentioned, uh, not I'm not saying that Hyunbin and Yejin are good people. I'm sure mm-hmm. they are. Mm-hmm. It's just that their image is very important. Like you would never see, like if you ever see like a scandal from one of those actors, it's not. It would be the biggest news like, in all of Korea. It's not like. A Kardashian scandal where only a percentage of the population care about it, right. and, and there's else, so like, many other scandals on. going on. Yeah, exactly. It's mm-hmm. it's completely different. Um, mm-hmm. That's why, like earlier last year, there was this whole scandal in the K-pop industry where one of the Big Bang members, who I guess is not a part of it anymore, he was running a club, and it was actually a play a center of prostitution and a lot of K-pop stars were in these anonymous chat rooms with one another and sharing like blackmailed footage of all these women the investigators were trying to figure out who the particular participants were because they were anonymous pretty much and it was a very crazy time because you would see all of these people who were like maybe in the same k-pop band or they were known to be friends like on tv shows and stuff and they were immediately distancing themselves like trying to save their image like in whatever way possible Mm -hmm. and so it's I feel like it's just a testament to how everything is very Im- image-based. Mm-hmm. For me, like I also think that Son Yejin and Hyunbin are really incredible actors. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess for me, I don't. I hold those celebrities to a different standard compared to Asian American actors because here, like I really care about these Asian American actors like advocating for the community and moving us forward. Versus in Korea, I don't really believe that they would really be outspoken and speak for the community necessarily because their movements are so monitored all the time. In Hollywood, there have been so many allegations of sexual assault against yeah. really famous actors. So if that sort of thing happened in Korea, do you think the agencies would shut it down immediately? Or do you think that this is something that would blow up extra big? Like what kind of which direction does that go? If you were to guess. Mm -hmm. It would definitely blow up. Um, The agencies usually also aren't very reliable in their responses. Like even, oh, that's another thing. They can't date like a lot of time. Like they're not allowed to share like date openly. They're not allowed to talk about their dating life in any way. Um, So it's very undercover. And so a lot of times agencies be like, oh no, like they're not dating or like they're not a part of this. Like just because... The celebrity is also the reputation of the company mm-hmm. as well. And yeah. so they usually start off like that. But if it like really got out of proportion and like let's say like prosecution got involved, then a lot of times the agencies will stop associating themselves with that celebrity Whoa. and will let them go. Yeah. And yeah, so- I noticed that there were a lot of articles of fans wanting them to get together in real life. <laughs> and like the articles always ended with the agency stepped in and said, We confirmed they're not dating. And I was just so surprised that the agency was like had such a big part in denying they make their the personal, statement. Their yeah. Life. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. The agencies are involved in literally every aspect, which I'm sure isn't that far off from what happens in America. Mm-hmm. But I think the cultural norm of speaking up and being your individual self mm-hmm. is more apparent in America than in Korea, where it's like anything you do, it can hurt other people. So mm-hmm. you just, it's just better to not say anything or to yeah. not do anything controversial. Or if yeah. you do, just don't get caught, basically. Yeah. So. I think the final thing that I wanted to share um, was my favorite part of the drama, which was the piano piece that's at the center of the story. Um, So Captain V, uh, he studied piano in Switzerland and he wrote a piano piece for his older brother, but his older brother was killed by the bad guy in the story who literally is going after all the people that we love in the story. (laughs) Horrible guy. Uh, And he really loved playing piano but then he this happened and he just like never really touched the piano again and it's a it's a beautiful piece it like I have listened to I just like keep listening to it after the drama is over um and also just like paired with the scenery when he plays it for the first time by the water is just like absolutely unforgettable and I really relate to this part of the story because I personally also play piano and loved it very much in high school but then there were some things that happened in college like I worked with a very strict teacher I um performed with some people who I no longer have a friendship with and that really tainted my Mm -hmm. um really just like tainted piano for me and so I've actually been staying with at my boyfriend's parents house and they have a gorgeous grand piano because he plays piano as well but I never played and yesterday after finishing the drama I played piano for the first time which was very meaningful because Talon you and I recently had a conversation where you asked me like what makes you feel most in your power what makes you feel uh, most like raw and unleashed and, and like my answer for everything was playing piano and I had not yeah. played piano for so long I was really surprised when you said that because I knew that you weren't playing that much anymore yeah I don't play and I just had 
I played piano for like one hour or so. I got Kevin's book of Chopin waltzes because uh, the drama mentions Chopin, but both of them like Chopin. And uh, I sight read through the entire book of waltzes. I did a little improv session. I learned how to play the piece in the drama by ear. And yeah, I felt like more like myself than I have in months. And yeah, part of that, actually most of that is thanks to this drama wow. and thanks to the moving story around this piece. So wow. I love the drama. I hope, like I think every time I think about it, I like it more and more. Like even now that I've finished watching it, I, I feel like I just like it more and more. Um, so yeah, go watch it if you want to feel a like rush of emotion. If you mm-hmm. want to feast your eyes on their fashion and their good looks <laughs> um, and feast your ears on the good music. And feast your ears on listening to Korean. It was a little bit like stressful, I guess, like reading the subtitles, trying to look at their face, reading the subtitles, trying to look at their face. <laughs> but I just love the way that Korean sounds. And I wish I wish I understood Korean because I would then understand much more nuances of the show. But I mean so many yeah. people learn Korean just from watching Korean drama. So yeah. I feel like you're because of the emphasis on music, I feel like you're gonna be like me where you're gonna start listening to the OST. Like oh, I in, have. My, in my in my old iPod. All I have are like K drama OSTs, like on repeat all the time. So I'm excited that you've just, I didn't know this was your first Korean drama ever. So yeah. I'm excited to recommend you more when you have the time. Gonna you take need a little bit of a break. Though. Time. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> my past week, it was just like a woozy week. I would do work and be like, wow, I was working. I was like, oh my God, what's happening in drama? What's happening in drama? I would finish work, watch till 3 a.m. That's how you get know up you're a morning. fan. <laughs> Amazing. He's so handsome. I, I've said this so many times throughout the day. And I'm wow, just gonna our say listeners are getting such a fangirl moment. From Sophia. <laughs> I love it. I feel like none of our other recommendations are going to be this intense <laughs> and this long. 